this video, we will start the proof for Caratodori theorem we saw just a few videos ago. Let's remember what the theorem said. This is Caratodori theorem. It says that we have mu star, an order measure, and whenever we grab the set M formed by all the mu star measurable sets, then that set M is a sigma algebra, and the restriction of mu star to this sigma algebra M is a complete measure. If you don't remember what any of these concepts mean, then just go back to the reproduction list and check out the previous videos. For this video, it will be the first part in the proof, because it's quite long, and what we will do is prove that n is a sigma algebra. That is, the set of all mu star measurable sets forms a sigma algebra. So let's start. First we have to prove that x is an element in M. And this is very simple. For this, we have to prove that x is mu star measurable. So just take some set E in parts of x. Now the measure of E is obviously the measure of E intersection x because E intersection x is the same set E. And we can just add the measure of E intersection the empty set. Because E intersection the empty set is just the empty set, and the measure of the empty set is zero. But the empty set is the complement of x, so this is no more than the measure of E intersection x plus the measure of E intersection X complement. And this one looking at the definition of measurable set tells us that X is an element in the sigma algebra or in the set M. The second step in proving that a set is a sigma algebra is to prove that it is closed under complementation. So to prove this, we want to take an element A that's in the sigma algebra and we want to see if A complement is also in a sigma algebra. So we have to prove that if A is measurable, then A complement is also measurable. And for the definition of measurable, just take a set E in parts of X. Now because A is measurable, then we know that the measure of E is equal to the measure of E intersection A plus the measure of E intersection A complement. This is just a definition of A being a measurable set. And now we can swap these two terms and this would give us the measure of E intersection A complement plus the measure of E intersection A. But now just remember that A is equal to A complement complement. And so we can rewrite this second term as the first one stays as it is, plus the second just change A with A complement, complement. And so we have E intersection a set times E intersection the set's complement. And this again tells us that a complement is measurable, so it is an element in the set M. So we have two out of the three steps necessary to prove that M is a sigma algebra. And the third step would be to prove that M is closed under countable unions. And we will do this in two steps. First, we will prove that it is closed under finite unions. And second, we will prove that it is closed under countable unions of these joint sets. And these two conditions will be enough to make sure that M is closed under countable unions. And so, with these three properties, we will have that M is a sigma algebra. So let's start by proving that it is closed under finite unions. For this, just take two elements, A and B, in M. And what we want to prove is that A union B is an element in the sigma algebra M. 
Again, to prove that a set is measurable, just take some set E in parts of X. And now remember that A is a measurable set. So then, this gives us that the measure of E is equal to the measure of E intersection A plus the measure of E intersection A complement. And now, just call this set E intersection A complement. Call it E tilde. Now, E tilde is just another element in parts of X. So we can apply the definition of V being measurable with E tilde instead of E. So let's do that. Let's leave the first term as it is. And for the second term, use the measurability of P. So the measure of E tilde will be equal to the measure of E tilde intersection B plus the measure of E tilde intersection B complement. And now here I have the sum of these first two terms. So I can use the subadditivity for mu star with these two sets and say that the sum of the measures will be greater than or equal to the measure of the union. So then all these will be greater than or equal to the measure of, and here I will use the subadditivity, so I will have E intersection A, and that is the first term, union, and the second term. And leave the last term as it is. And let's think about what this is E tilde intersection B complement. So E tilde intersection B complement is equal to E intersection A complement. This is E tilde intersection B complement. But now this is equal to E intersection A union B complement. This is just using the Morgan's law. So this last term gives us, we just leave the first one as it is. And the last one is mu star of E intersection A union B complement. Now let's work on this first term. And for this, let's just draw a Venn diagram. Let's say that this set is E, this one is B, and this one is A. E intersection A is this pink section. E tilde is E intersection A complement, so it'd be all this region here. And when I intersect it with B, I will get this portion here. And now I have to take the union. So I'm actually grabbing all this here. And that is just E intersection A union B. So this first term is the measure of E intersection A union B. And so this will be equal to mu star of E intersection A union B plus mu star of E intersection A union B complement. And this sum is equal to the measure of E. So using the definition of measurability, it gives us that A union B is measurable. So we have that M is closed under finite unions, because when we have the union between two elements, we have the union for any finite number of elements. So let's work on the other property. We will prove that it's 
closed under countable unions of disjoint sets. So for this, let's take a sub j from j equals 1 to infinity, a sequence of sets in n. So a sub j is measurable for any j. And let's take these sets so that they are disjoint. And now let's put a few names. So we will call b sub n to the union from j equals 1 up to n, so a finite union of these elements. And we will call b to the union up to infinity of the elements. What we want to prove is that this set b is an element in n, that is, b is measurable. For this, as usual, we just take some set in parts of x. And this proof is a bit complicated, so we're going to start with the measure of E intersection B sub n. And we will use the fact that A sub n is measurable. So then this measure can be written as E intersection B sub n intersection A sub n plus the measure of E intersection B sub n intersection a sub n complement, because A sub n is an element in n, so it's measurable. Now let's see what this is. B sub n is the union up to n, and all the sets A sub j are disjoint, so when I intersect these two elements, it will give me the last one in the union, so it will give me A sub n. And whenever I intersect B sub n intersection, a sub n complement, I will get the union of all the other elements except a sub n. So this gives me the measure of E intersection a sub n plus the measure of E intersection b sub n minus 1. And here is very important that we are using that the sequence is disjoint. So we started with the measure of E intersection B sub n, and it gave us as a result the measure of E intersection A sub n plus the measure of E intersection B sub n minus 1. So we can continue doing the same, but now with this and taking A sub n minus 1 in the definition of measurability. So when we do this, we would get the measure of E intersection A n minus 1 plus the measure of E intersection B n minus 2. So continuing like this n number of times, we will get that the measure of E intersection B sub n is equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to n of the measure of E intersection A sub j. So we will use this, this new property, to prove that the set B, the union up to infinity, is a set in M. And now remember, we proved that the union of finite elements in M was a measurable set. So then this gives us that B sub N is an element in M, is a measurable set. Let's use this. So we will start with the measure of E and use the definition of measurability for B sub n. So the measure of E is equal to the measure of E intersection B sub n plus the measure of E intersection B sub n complement. Now remember, B sub n was obviously a subset of P, because P was taking the infinite union. And so this gives us that P complement is a subset of P sub n complement. And because mu star is an outer measure, we get that the measure of B complement is smaller than or equal to the measure of P sub n complement. And so 
we can use this property here to having the measure of the first term, I just leave it as it is, plus the measure of E intersection B complement. And to do this, I have to put greater than or equal to here. But now the measure of E intersection B sub n is the one we calculated here. So that measure is just the sum from j equals 1 to n of mu star of E intersection A sub j. And we get the other one. And now because the sets A sub j are disjoint, we get that the sum of the measures will be equal to the measure of the union. This step, I recommend you try and prove it. It's not actually hard, you just have to prove it for two elements, A and B disjoint, and the measure of the union equal to the sum of the measures. Use the measurability of the sets A and B. So with that proof, we would have that this is equal to the measure of the union from j equals 1 to infinity of E intersection A sub j. And this could even be written as the measure of E intersection the union of A sub j. Plus the measure of E intersection B complement. And now we are very close to finish. We just have to let n tends to infinity. And so what we will get from, we have on this side, we don't have any dependence on the limit. We have a greater two and something that depends on n. So this gives us on the left side, the measure of E greater than or equal to. And the measure of the union, here the union was up to n. The measure of this union is when we let n tends to infinity, turns out to be the measure of E intersection B. It will be the measure of E intersection, the union up to infinity, which was defined as B. And we have the other term that also does not depend on n. And so that's it, because now we have the greater than or equal to. And if you remember from our previous video on measurability, greater than or equal to was more than enough because this inequality is trivial, the second one. And so we have that it's actually an equality and therefore B is an element of M. And because we have all these properties, we can finally say that M is a sigma algebra. It was a lot, but all this is proving this first sentence in the theorem. In the next video, we will see the rest.